Hello, so I'm back with you now. And now we're to a more exciting part because we get to take our exercises and play them in a way that makes it feel like we're playing music. That's one big thing for me is like giving you information, but trying to find ways to make sure that you're able to apply the information so that you can then do other things with it in the future. And so I made this little play along that I'm, that I'm about to play for you um, so that we can practice some of the things that we went over. Um, the first thing that, we, that I want to put to practice is the major scale. I want to put the major scale into practice. So I want to show you how I'm going to go about doing this. You can use your, your middle C to high C or low C to middle C. I'm going to use, I'm going to demonstrate, you know what, I'm going to let my demo, I did a demo of it. I'm going to let that kind of help me out. We're going to do it. I'm going to play along with my demo so that you can hear how it's going to go. It's going to start for me. One, two, three, four. That's C. D. Now I'm going to E. Yeah. Then we're going to go to G. A. Okay, so again, we literally play at our C major scale in, in whole notes. And so that's what was going on over there. So again, that is... Then after we play our C major scale in whole steps, I'm taking the major pentatonic. I'm playing C twice. C. And then I'm walking the major pentatonic down. C, A, G, E, D, C. So you should remember it from the previous lessons. Then I'm walking it up the opposite way um, when the music breaks again. I'm going. track what I did was I played C twice and walk that major scale that major pentatonic down and then I back opposite again so this time I might come a little late with C I'm gonna demonstrate it one more time
a fun way that you can practice your major scale um, ascending. Now, you can deviate and do the same thing by descending down. You know, you can, t you, can, you can reverse that so you can practice it in your own practice time. And then get used to using a major pentatonic scale as a riff in itself. So that was the goal of that one. Okay, so, we, so right in that exercise, we accomplished the major scale. We accomplished practicing in a play-along fashion the major pentatonic. So I'm going to offer this, this um, play-along in itself where you can practice it by itself on a track um, for download. So you're ready to get this outside of playing along with me. So for time's sake, I'm not going to, you know, have you play it with the music right now. You can just skip back and play along with me. So now I'm going to move to the next exercise using this play along. So I want you to hear it and then I'm going to explain what you're hearing. Okay, so that's what's going on with that. Now, to explain what's happening, I'm taking each degree of the scale, and I'm just walking up like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm, I'm taking the scale. So literally, if I change the angle, you can see like this. I'm going. <laughs> You know, counting in quarter notes. Then I'm going to the second degree. Third degree. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. And then eight. And then back to the riff. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for you to do that if you have not mastered the modes. So if you're not mastered modes, you're going to need to go back because this is going to be moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. It's going to be moving a little bit. All right, so this is how I'm going to play with it. And if you're ready, play along with me. Here we go. C to high C is too hard for you. Like the higher notes get a little hard. So maybe once you start getting down to, yeah, play from the low C. I think I was getting mixed up with playing from the middle C up to the high C. 
um, even though we can play up there this would not work good for you to do it there you definitely want to start from low C on up so this gave us a fun way to work practice our modes and feel like we're playing music and not just doing an exercise all right so now I'm gonna go over the, the next concept that I gave you uh, again this play along is gonna be to the side you can go and practice all these things as much as you like so the next one that we have is going to be the note bending. And so I want to let you hear it first, and then I'm going to explain. So I, I know you've heard enough because I know it sounds so good to your ears. It doesn't sound good to my ears, but it still, <laughs> it still makes the point. So what we were doing, remember, when we did, we did scoops or note bending, we would lower our jaw, and then we would, so we hit the pitch, right? So it's normal. And then we, so we got, uh, we start lowering it, uh, and we start bringing it back up. That's what's happening. We're literally taking... The, the scale as we played it before with four beats a piece for each note the major scale but we're adding these bends into it and then we're hitting the riff afterwards so that's what's going on all right so this time i'm going to demonstrate one two three four uh, That was enough. That's another way to practice scoops or note bends. Now the next one I'm gonna have you practice is moving from the note bend. We want to move from the note bend into vibrato. So we're gonna literally play each note on beat like wow. So here's the demo, and then um, then you're gonna then I'm gonna do it with you. Now we want to take the same thing and we're going to go in eighth notes. <laughs> one, two, three, four. 
one and two and three and four and. And with this, the main thing we want to do is try to be precise with controlling it. Because in real music, we're not going to think about the beat. We're going to use a vibrato that feels right for us, the different speed that feels right at whatever time. And that's going to be cool, but you have to first learn how to control it. So our objective is just to control it on beat right now. <laughs> The goal is to work on six things. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And so again, I want you to go back with the with the with the with the track and work on these things. One D and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Here we go. Okay, now in a real situation with vibrato, so we're learning control, but how would I use this normal? So I'm gonna play with that track and I'm gonna try to make it seem normal how we use the different speeds. See, that's chord note. All right, now eighth notes. So in real life, you're going to probably use different speeds at different times. You're going to play straight and you're going to add it wherever you need it. And you're going to put it the way you feel right in the beat, but you're not going to think about the beat. One and two and three and four and you're going to play it the way a singer would. La, you're going to do it the way they would think. That's how you want to approach it. Okay. So now. We went over also, we went over this grace notes. So grace notes, the first two I'm going to do is I'm going to do that, that A. I'm going to do that A to that G, but a B flat in the middle. Get E to F, back to E to D. So I'm going to add a C. So let's do that again. E, F, E, D, C. So the first grace, I'm going to go. That's what's happening. And the next time we're gonna, the next time we're gonna go.
E, F, E. D, C. And I'm going to do them one after the other um, before we get to the major pentatonic riff. I'm going to do it like so. Okay, so so how would you do that when you're practicing? It's kind of like da da one, two three ah. So listen to the background to know when to come in. Okay, now, when you're practicing, if you're, if you're still struggling on the first one, do the first one at the same time and, and, and then work on the second one and then combine it. But, either, but don't let yourself not practice it. So I'll show you what I mean. right place but you can keep the same time in three so you can practice making it feel normal while you practice so you can practice some combination or one of those riffs at a time and it still works if you do the other one the same way one two three So I hope this made sense for you and that you were, you were able to run with this. So you have been given a lot of toys in this, in this lesson that's, that's going to really add up in the future to help you sound soulful, to help you sound like a singer, to have that gospel touch, to have that soulful touch, that smooth jazz touch in your playing. So you, you, you got a lot of tools, a lot of tools. So in the next course, we're going to spend more time with how to use these in real song examples or more realistic examples because we really had to take time in the first two courses to build the foundation. Um, I think the next course we may build some more with some more foundational tools and, and, and then we'll see more how to do it. But um, um, my goal is always to give you the tools that it takes to do more on your own whether you're around me or not. So the, the goal in the next course would definitely be to give you some more tools but show you how to use what you've got on a greater level in song situations and um, add more tools along the way. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking the time out. Don't waste the time that you spent today by thinking because now that you have some of the toys and that you've seen that some of those things are easy to play with, that, oh, it's nothing to it. A lot of times the easy things are harder because your mind tells you that you don't have to spend as much time, but you do. You have to spend time trying to sound as good as you can and be as smooth as you can. And it takes time and it takes repetition. So don't waste the time and the knowledge that you gained today and go and do things the way you've been doing them. Turn around and make this a part of your regimen. Everything that I've shown you, you can break up into five minute sections of your practice so far. And you might have 20 or 30 minutes tops of time that you could spend on basics like this to really build yourself up to where you can really play amazingly. All right? So keep it smooth. Spend time with these toys so you can have a better play time.